What's up everybody, Kevin Barnett here from Tokyo, Japan. A place with two alphabets, with three styles of writing, and a long history of beautiful calligraphy. Seemed the perfect place to introduce you to Erica Loach, the love letterer on Instagram. A while back we sent Erica a shape oko. We didn't give her any instructions other than go and make something that you would want to see. What would she do? What would she make? How quickly could she learn? What would her first project be? All those questions answered now. Here's Erica from the start to the end of her very first CNC project. And my days are brighter, my shoulders are so much lighter. Just for a moment there, I thought that they Hey guys, I'm Erica from The Love Letter, and the guys at Carbide 3D have so graciously let me take over their channel for this video today. I'm going to show you how I combined my hand lettering with the Carbide Create software to create this sign on my Shapeoko 4. Um, so I use digital hand lettering to create um, different designs, and some of them are SVGs, some of them are printables, all really fun, and I do a lot of it on my iPad. So I was able to take my hand lettering, um, take some Baltic brush plywood and some MDF and make this really cool, really sentimental, easy sign. It was super quick um, and the lettering on the back is actually the lyrics to the first dance from my husband and I's wedding. Um, but it all started with these letters, just this love you. It was just something I was doodling. Um, so I'm going to take you guys through the process and kind of show you some of the hiccups I encountered um, as a newbie with the CNC and just show you how I made this sign and how you can too, whether you know how to hand letter or not. So let's hop over to the iPad and I'm going to take you through my first step. I am using the Procreate app on my iPad with an Apple Pencil. You can use it with any stylus, but this just allows me to doodle whenever I feel inspiration hit. Right now I'm doing it with my kids running all around me. Um, I can do it while my kids are eating breakfast, I can do it while they're at dance class, and I love that, that if I have a design in mind, I can get it down onto the iPad really quickly and save it for later until I'm ready to export it to my CNC. So I just keep going with my lettering until I have results that I'm happy with. And then I will take it and I will export it to my computer as a PNG file. And then I can take it to Carbide Create or another software to create the SVG. For this particular piece of lettering, I did take it to Illustrator first and convert it into an SVG really quickly there. But the trace function on Carbide Create would have worked just fine also. You can also use Inkscape Online, which is a free option to convert things to SVGs, and that makes it really easy also. Um, you can convert your JPEGs or PNGs from Procreate or from any other design program that you're using. So here I am just resizing it to my liking, and I am creating toolpaths so that my center cutouts will be cut out first, just for stability in the cut. And I'm going through and I'm going to use a 1 8 end mill. And if you see that my feeds and speeds are fairly conservative, it's because I am a newbie with my CNC, and so I'm using really conservative rates because I want to make sure that I'm not breaking any bits and that I'm getting the hang of using my machine before I really dive into customizing things further. So then as I move along, I am just making sure that my simulation looks correct and that um, I like the depth that it's cutting through. I want it to cut all the way through my MDF and I'm using 3 quarter MDF and you'll see that I lost a little bit of my detail in the O on U but I'm okay with that. And here I am adding some tabs and the tabs are again for stability. Full disclosure, I didn't use tabs the first time I cut this and I lost a lot of my lettering in the process. So I'm just making sure that I add tabs this time around so that the cut comes out beautifully and all intact and then I will just take it over to my bandsaw when it's finished and cut off the tabs, no big deal. Just make sure that you're putting the tabs on the outside edges so that it's really easy to cut them off. You can use a scroll saw to cut into the more detailed corners to get the tabs off, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now when I first lettered the Love You, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. I just liked that I would have my lettering cut out. That kind of felt like magic to me. And so I went back to my iPad and just kind of started brainstorming what else I could do with it. And I originally was going to put it on a round backer with either a herringbone pattern or a shiplap pattern, but then I thought, why not just combine more of my lettering? So from there, I decided to letter out the lyrics from the first dance that my husband and I did at our wedding. Once I was satisfied with my design, I decided the easiest way to affix my words into a round would be to apply a clipping mask right here in Procreate. 
And what this does is it would just crop down my words into a circle or whatever shape I drew. But this way I could create a perfect circle in Procreate and I wouldn't have to worry about it later. You can do this with lettering, but you can also do this with any font you like with the add text function. But this just means that I won't have to go through and delete other design elements once I get it into Carbide Create and I can easily resize my lettering and move it around so that I can get it to exactly where I like it and then export it as a PNG or a JPEG. Taking my design over to Carbide Create, I decided to use the trace function right there in the software as opposed to using Illustrator to convert it into a PNG. And I was so happy to see that all of my details of my lettering were still there. None of it was lost whenever it was traced, which if you convert things into vectors, you know that sometimes those details can get lost in the mix, but none of it was. So here I am just creating a circle path um, for the contour so that my circle will be cut out and I am using a 16 by 16 piece of Baltic birch plywood. It's about a half inch thick and I liked the variation of the plywood with the MDF lettering because I am going to be carving the words into the plywood. I wanted to have a stained piece of plywood with the lighter wood showing through once it's carved. I'm also adding back in the love you lettering to see where it will fit in and I'll explain why I added it back in a little bit later. So now I'm creating my tool pass and I'm just doing an advanced V carve with a 90 degree bit and trying to decide what depth I want it at. At first I thought the .03 would be deep enough but as you can see whenever I pull up the simulation here it's just not deep enough for me. So I went back and I changed it to .07 max depth and that seemed to be exactly where I wanted it so that none of the stain will be showing through in odd portions of the middle of the round and the lettering. Now back to the love you words. I decided to go in and create an offset around the love you um, without the inner pockets of the O's and the E's. And for this reason, I wanted to pocket it out and just create a little bit of depth there that the MDF letters could sit in. Not only would this help me know where to place the letters whenever it was time, it would also just add a little bit more dimension and interest to the sign in general. I used a pocket toolpath with a 1-8 down cut bit and that provided just the right amount of detail to really get in there where the tail of the L and the U are without losing any detail. And it was important that it all carved uniformly and didn't leave any odd pieces. So the 1 8 really did the trick here. From there, I just needed to create the last toolpath to cut the circle out. So I made sure to use a contour toolpath with my 1 4 inch end mill and I wanted to make sure to add tabs as well because as we all know whenever the router is going around I didn't want it to move or shift and then really mess up all of my hard work since that's the last step. So I made sure to have it cut down to the uh, bottom of the stock and I just checked my simulation one more time just to make sure that I like how it looked and everything was looking perfect so now it's time to take it over to my Shapeoko 4 XXL and head out into the heat in the garage. I clamped down my piece of Baltic birch plywood and it was already stained a beautiful espresso color. I chose that color because I really wanted to see the difference in the color of the stain versus what was being carved out with my lettering. And so as you can see, the machine does such a beautiful job. And this is something that I might have tried to do before with a rotary tool and a scroll saw. And while that could have turned out beautiful, this is really a streamlined process that made it so easy. I also used a bit setter since I was using a couple different bits in this particular part of the sign. And that really helped streamline the process also so that I didn't have to zero out the z-axis every single time I was changing out the bit. I also wish that my machine worked as quickly as it did here. That would be awesome, but honestly, it was worth the wait. And um, once everything was carved out, this pocketing part was really, really, really quick. And I don't regret doing it because it made it so much easier to line everything up. It also looks a little bit scary here with all the chips flying, and I was a little worried it was gonna be rough. But once I took it out, it looked great, and the cut was so smooth and beautiful. While my last tool path was running, cutting out that circle, I went over to those words that I cut out earlier and I sprayed the MDF with filler primer. I did one coat and then I sanded it down so that it would be nice and smooth. And then I took some white spray paint and I sprayed the letters. I did have some issue because it was 105 whenever I sprayed the letters, which is outside of the recommended heat index for the spray paint. So I had a little bit of bubbling. So I did have to do a little bit of problem solving there. It required me 
sanding them down and spray painting again and then sanding again and touching up some spots, which is not my ideal workflow, but honestly, it was fine and just something I have to deal with in the summer heat. When my final tool path had finished and my paint had fully cured, I went over my letters with some 400 grit sandpaper just to smooth out any imperfections that were left. And I really loved the finish that it left, but I had to go really slow and really steady to not take off too much paint and not damage anything. Then I went around the edge of my round with some 220 sandpaper and just really lightly sanded it just to smooth everything out. And then I sanded a little bit inside of the pocket, but not much. Since this sign was going to be hanging inside, I decided to use a mineral oil to finish the backer as opposed to a urethane because I just like the richness that it brings to the wood. So I did just one quick coat to rehydrate the wood and get rid of any dry spots that were left over from sanding or from handling it with my hands that were covered in spray paint. Next was time to do the glue up. As a crafter, I really love to use E6000 glue. I love that it adheres really quickly, it dries fairly quickly, it does take about 72 hours to fully cure, but that doesn't really bother me, especially whenever it's hot out, it does cure a lot quicker. Um, you just have to be careful not to hold the bottle upside down because it will kind of explode on you. So this was easy to just fit it right into the pockets. I didn't have to do any lineups, I didn't have to do any measuring, it just snapped right into where it was supposed to go. So now that the sign is all put together, I can show you guys the finished product. It is all done, everything is glued up, and the glue is dry. Um, you can see that I did not sand the edges of my round. I could have stained it, I could have added um, a band to it and painted that white to match the lettering, but I like the more rustic look of the two different tones of the wood. And um, I like that it matches the lettering on the back. And overall, I just love that this sign is so sentimental. This would make such a wonderful anniversary gift, wedding gift, or just something for your home. And you could really customize it with any lettering that you like or any um, you know design on the background. The sky is really the limit. And I just love how this all came together. Thank you.